Good morning, church. Good morning, Facebook and YouTube and so on. Great is thy faithfulness. God is a faithful God. 441 in our hymnal. Would you turn to that and we're going to sing this. And we're going to preach out of Lamentations chapter 3, written by Jeremiah, the weeping prophet. This song was taken from this uh, chapter in the Bible, Lamentations 3. On the first, let's sing it, church. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever wilt be. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Summer and winter, and springtime and harvest, sun, moon, and stars in their courses above, join with all nature in manifold witness to thy great faithfulness, mercy, and love. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Pardon for sin and a peace that endureth. Thy own dear presence to cheer and to guide. Strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow. Blessings all mine with ten thousand beside. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning new mercies I see. All I have needed thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Let us pray, Lord, thank you. The great faithfulness of God, ever faithful, never lies, never lets us down. The all-forgiving one, help us now to understand as we study from the Word of God, Lamentations chapter 3. Bless us now, Lord. Bring that lost one that's closest to hell to salvation today. Bring back a backslider. Help us now, Lord. Open our hearts. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, Lamentations was written by uh, Jeremiah, the weeping prophet. It's right after Jeremiah in your Old Testament. My wife was... Uh, I was reading my Bible this morning and my wife was cooking me breakfast and she, we, usually, usually I'm reading the Bible when my wife is, I'm usually alone early in the morning when I read my Bible, but today it was a little bit different and, and she was there reading, uh, she was, uh, it just worked out today that she was cooking me breakfast while I was reading my Bible and uh, I made the uh, the, the reading today is in Lamentations 3, 4, and 5. And so when, when I started out, Lamentations 3, take a look at it. I, hope you, uh, I, pr I pray you'd open up and read along with me. It's very important. To, I don't want you to think I'm, I'm not going to sell you a bill of goods. I'm going to tell you the truth. And it's in the Bible, King James Bible. I am the man that has seen affliction by the rod of his wrath. Whose wrath is this talking about? Now, God's wrath. You know what it means? 
God has to put the stick of affliction on us sometime. Have, have you ever been afflicted of God? I have. Yeah. I've been afflicted of God. Why does God afflict us? Because what? Because of our sin. Yeah. You Pharisees that don't think you sin, oh, you sin plenty. You try to blame everybody else for everything. you got to look in the mirror and say, it's me that is sin. Can you identify with me and with sin and saying it's me that is sin? Okay. So God, he has to afflict us. Like I always say, I just want him to hit me with a little bitty switch. I don't want to have to hit me in the head with a baseball bat. If he needs to hit me in the head with a baseball bat, he will. If he needs to cut my arm off, he will. If he needs to kill me and take me to heaven early because I'm saved, he will. Anything that's appropriate, God will do. He hath led me and brought me into darkness. God took me into darkness. That's what it says. This is the Bible. It's what Jeremiah preached, the weeping prophet. But not into light. You know what I want? Light. God is light. Why do we go in the darkness? Anybody got any answer on that one? Who, why do we go in the darkness? Answer that. Huh? Huh? Oh, yeah? You end up in hell, you won't find it to be much fun. We sin. That's darkness. Darkness will take you to hell. You can call it fun. Wine, women, and song. It'll take you to the fires of hell and the dark. How can you have darkness and fire at the same time? You have to ask God about that. I don't know, but hell is burning and it's fire and it's darkness. Surely against me is he turned. Yeah? You want to live in sin? God turned against you. God to beat up on you. My wife said, honey... Why do you preach so much on tough stuff and sin and that? I says, honey, this is today's reading, Lamentation 3. I'm starting with verse 1. We're on verse 3, and I'm reading it right, and I'm going to be preaching on it later. You know, all I am is a preacher called to preach the Bible. That's what I do. I said, you know, you got to have the bad before you get the good. Did you know that? You got, I, I saw you people. I was watching you. I saw Sharon. She was singing, Great is thy faithfulness. You liked that, didn't you, Sharon? Yeah. How, how many of you liked that? Great is thy faithfulness. Morning. I can't hardly sing that song without crying. I cry often when I sing it. I cried. I was crying this morning. But I was reading this to my wife, and she's making breakfast, and I was reading the Bible. I can't hardly sing that song or talk about it or say, Great is thy faithfulness without tears coming up to my eyes. We love it. But do you know what it comes after? Repentance. I was talking to this young man here today about it salvation and repentance what real salvation is most people ain't got a clue about what real salvation is they think they're saved and they live like the devil you know why you know why people live like the devil the devil is their daddy the devil is their daddy i'm so sick and tired of people come around and say oh i say back 20 years ago so whatever what happened nothing carrying on wine, women, and song. And, uh, and I says, the problem is you don't know what repentance is and you ain't never been saved. I'm not mad at you, but I'm just telling you the way it is. Saved people have a new life and you get the mercies of God when you're saved. My flesh and my skin hath he made old. He hath broken my bones. He hath builded against me 
encompass me with gall and travail. This is God doing it to, uh, 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 who's this preacher in Lamentations? Jeremiah, the weeping prophet. He has set me in a dark place. You run around at night and do all your shenanigans at night. Like I say about people all the time, I, I, a lot of times I'll say this. Those people or that organization, it's, it's dark side. It's dark side. That's mean it's the devil's people or devil's organization. Dark side. God's people are children of light, not darkness. He has set me in dark places as they that be dead of old. He has hedged me about that I cannot get out. He hath made me, he had made my chain heavy. Have, have God ever put a heavy chain upon you? You know why he's put a heavy chain upon you? Sin! 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 P people don't like. See, I preach like Jeremiah preached. I'm a weeping prophet. I preach against sin. You're looking for pussyfooting preachers. You like the song, Great is Thy Faithfulness, but you don't like the beginning. You don't like Jeremiah 3, verses uh, one to seven where I went so far listen up we're going on you got to get the whole word of God some preachers and a lot of you that are Christians maybe ain't even Christians probably not all you want is good from the Bible and, and, and all you want is candy and ice cream and the merry-go-round you don't want all this stuff I'm reading about <coughs> You know, I'm reading this stuff here, beginning of Jer uh, Lamentations, written by Jeremiah. This all comes because of what? Sin. Can we say it together? This all comes because of what? Sin. We all raise our head and say, that happened to me. Why did it happen to you and me? Because of what? Sin. Can you say that? Sin. Yeah. You dig your own hole and bury yourself in sin. Also, when I cry and shout, he shutteth out my prayer. That's just like in, in Proverbs chapter 1. It says, I've, I've reproved you and you wouldn't listen. Proverbs 1. But then he says, when you pray, you know what I'll do? Ha, 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 ha. Laugh. I try to reprove. What, what does reproof mean? Telling you to get straight. Repent of your sins. You don't? You're going to live like the devil? Follow the devil? Then you're going to pray. Oh, God, I'm in such a mess. Like this mess we've been reading about here. Haven't we read about a mess in Lamentations 3 here, these beginning verses? Sin, sin, sin. Verse 9. He hath enclosed my ways with hewn stone. Big cut stone, like the stones of the temple, and the stones that are made by these great majestic buildings that were, were fortified. Hewn stones. He hath made my paths crooked. You know what makes your paths crooked? Sin. Huh? You understand that? You think you're going to get away with it, and all of a sudden, things get messed up, don't they? roof cage in darkness he was unto me as a bear lying in wait like a bear waiting by the side of the road to jump on you i like to ride out on the on on the loop out there along the uh, river and by the ocean and uh, but i saw two times you don't see him a lot around here but i saw two big bears uh, black bears, and I didn't think they were that big, but both the bears I seen, they were 500 pounds or more. I mean, they were big bears. I don't know, so I thought there was little bears here, but these bears were big bears. And uh, it would have been a bad thing if I had been walking down that road and he come out of the side of the road. Like it says here, he was unto me as a bear lying in wait and as a lion in a secret place, I think a lion moves faster than a bear. <laughs> I don't think you can outrun a bear, but I know you ain't outrunning no lion. <laughs> King of the beast, and he's brave. He's tough. 
It'll eat you up. The bear will eat you up. The lion will eat you up. Alligator will eat you up too. So will the crocodile, huh? He hath turned aside my ways and pulled me in pieces. Like that bear get you and tear you up. You think that big, you think that black bear is something? How'd you like a grizzly bear get a hold of you? <laughs> Them things, I think they're like thousands of pounds, aren't they? I mean, yeah, I mean, they're like, they're big. I think they move fast, too. You know what I like to see? Uh, grizzly bears, are, are, are they the ones that eat the salmon fish? Yeah, grizzlies eat the salmon. They catch them in the air, man. <laughs> Hi, huh, in Alaska, huh? Yeah, yeah. But the ones I see in Alaska, when you see them, they, they migrate or something there, and they're going against, they go against the stream, don't they? And the bears just sit there and just like, they just, just tons of them, they just grab them and eat them, grab them and eat them. They don't have to chase them or nothing. <laughs> Here they come against, against the water grain. <laughs> yeah, turn aside my ways and pulled me in pieces like that grizzly bear that get you and tear you up just like a salmon fish. He hath made me desolate. He hath bent his bow and set me as a mark for an arrow. I mean, when God shoots, he don't miss. And when he, when he pulls back that arrow in the bowstring, he's, he's looking for you, he gonna get you. It's like Sonny. Sonny's hunting. My friend Sonny Faircloth, he's hunting today. His son called me Matthew. They hunt together. And he's talking about Matthew. <laughs> Matthew like this. Matthew called me this morning. I talked to him. And uh, Sonny's hunting today. He took off work. He's a roofer. He has a roofing company. Faircloth Roofing. And uh, uh, Sonny told me, uh, we, we was out in the woods trying to, trying to find a deer. And uh, he said a, a, a deer that that Matthew shot, and uh, uh, but they couldn't find because you know what happened? Shot him in the leg. You shoot him in the leg, he's gonna go a long ways before he dies. <laughs> and they're trying to find him, they couldn't. So so anyway. Uh, but he said Matthew, Matthew's one did, but he said Matthew's a good shot. He's actually a better shot than I am with, with, with uh, uh, he said, <laughs> then he said, Matthew, I'm gonna tell this on you too, your daddy told me. And and, and, and then he shot another deer, is a little bitty deer. You know, mo most of the deer here in Florida are little bitty deers. It, it ain't like Northern deers. Where, 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 where I come from in Michigan and Wisconsin, they got real deer there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, there's a big deer there, big deer. And anyway, they got, the, and, and he said, uh, oh, uh, uh, I see you getting any deer? He said, yeah, Matthew got one this morning. And uh, he says, just, just a little bitty one. He said, but Matthew said, the big deer was right in front of it. <laughs> and he said, the big deer jumped out of the way and the arrow hit the little deer. Do you believe that story? I don't believe that for a minute, huh? That, ain't that a, Matthew, I'd never told that story. Ain't one win in a million that I've ever had. But anyway, Matthew's a good guy. And his daddy said, but anyway, Sonny's off today. I don't know. But anyway, here it's talking about the, about the God pulling back his bowl. Donnie, he'll get you right between the eyes. And you too, Joe. And you too, Jake. Yeah. And me. And Joanne. Sharon, too, don't shake your head. No, Jaron, he'll get you right between the eyes. <laughs> right between the eyes. Any of us. A good shot. Where's the, where's the deers? He had bent his bow, verse 12, and set me as a mark. He set you as a mark, he's going to get you. He's, he's good shooting that bow. He hath caused the arrows of his quiver to enter into my reins. 
I was a derision to all my people and their song all day. He has filled me with bitterness. He has made me drunken with wormwood. He hath also broken my teeth with gravel stones. He has covered me with ashes. You see, God gets pretty rough sometimes, doesn't he? All, all you want to talk about, you, all you want the preacher to preach about, many people are that way. My wife tells me, okay, to preach a nice sermon. Preach a candy stick sermon. <laughs> hey, too much wickedness going on and too much sin. So God's got to do what? Beat up on us. And send the majority of us where? To hell. To hell. To hell. And Jeremiah had to preach it and he cried. He cried it in the book of Jeremiah and he cried it in Lamentations. He's crying it out to us today. Yeah. And thou hast removed my soul far from peace. Are you far away from peace today? Are you in turmoil and destruction and it's rough? Jeremiah was here too. I forgot prosperity. I said my strength and my hope is perished from the Lord. Remembering my affliction and my misery the wormwood and the gall. My soul hath them still in remembrance and is humbled in me. God's beating up on Jeremiah, wasn't he? Huh? It's pretty heavy stuff. My, my wife wasn't enjoying this when I was reading it to her this morning. But she perked up now. Listen up now. Listen up now. This I recall to my mind. Therefore, I have hope. Uh oh, there's hope. Did you hear all this punishment and trouble that, that was here in the beginning of this third chapter? It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. Whoa, there we, we got a ray of hope, didn't we? Huh? Amen? A little hope, amen? Because his compassions fail not. As much as he has to beat on up us and send a bunch of people to hell, his compassions don't fail. They are new every morning. Glory. New every morning. Great is our faithful. That's the song we just sang this morning, didn't it? Great is our faithful. That's a song of the Moody Bible Institute. Anybody know who D.L. Moody was? He was the greatest evangelist of the 1800s. He was a worldwide evangelist. Actually, probably millions of people were saved because of him. He died in 1899 at the age of 61. He was a young man. He had a school there in Chicago, but it wasn't called Moody Bible Institute. But after he died, they named it after him, Moody Bible Institute. And way back, this, soul's, this song's a real old song. It was, their, it was their theme song, Great Is Our Faithfulness. But Moody Bible Institute has changed. They're, they're not like D.L. Moody. In fact, I even talked to one of the presidents of it many years ago, and he even told me that, I, I read some stuff that R.A. Torrey wrote, was the successor to D.L. Moody, and, and I said, this is what R.A. Torrey said about D.L. Moody. Seven Reasons Why God Used D.L. Moody. Ari Torrey wrote it. It's a little bitty book. And I says, it doesn't seem like Moody Bible Institute today believes that and practices that. It, the certain subject that I was bringing up was the filling of the Holy Ghost. And another one. There were several. There were seven things why God used it. But I said, do you believe the way Moody did on that? This is the president of the, of the institution. I wrote him in a letter. I didn't talk to him. I wrote him in a letter. And he wrote me back in a letter. I'm trying to think of which president it was. I'll call his name out. I, I still probably got the letter he sent me. He says, no, 
We do not practice that of what Moody taught. I had a return letter. You know what a return letter said to him? Watch take his name off your school then. <laughs> huh? I think I had a right to do that, don't you? A man that was the greatest evangelist of the 1800s and read, led more people to Christ around the world, and they put his name on a school that he had founded. I think if they were honest, they'd take his name off the school. Anybody know about Moody? Send him a letter now. Ask him and change it. They ain't changed it. Because I've asked others that go there later. Moody, Moody Bible Institute is nothing, nothing, nothing. They're living off his name in the past and making big money off it. It's a rich school in Chicago. They ain't doing much for God. Oh, there's a few saved people in there, but they ain't D.L. Moody and they'll take his name off it. He said, well, I don't like that. I don't like the preacher. I don't, you know, I'm an alumni of Moody Bible Institute. Maybe you can do something about getting them right with God or changing the name of the school. Where am I? What verse? What verse am I? Huh? 34? 24? The Lord is my portion, saith my soul. Therefore will I hope in him, the Lord. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him. Amen. To the soul that seeketh him. That's me. It is good that a man should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. Isn't that good stuff? Glory. It is good for a man that he bear the yoke of his youth. He sitteth alone and keepeth silence because he hath borne it upon him. He put it his mouth in the dust. If so be, they may be whole. He giveth his cheek to him that smiteth him. He is filled full of reproach. That's reference to Jesus. For the Lord will not cast off forever. But though he cause grief, yet will he have compassion. See, he gets after us because of what? Our what? Sin. How many sinners we got in here? How many bad sinners we got in here? All of us. All of us. All of us. Our hearts are desperately wicked. Desperately wicked. And until you realize that and repent of it, I wouldn't play with these. Some people play with it. I know sometimes, Joe, Joe, you fool around sometime and play, but the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. And, 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 and you better be careful. You better be careful. I wouldn't play much with God. Sometimes... We play too much with God on serious businesses like the topic we have today in Lamentations chapter 3. Of the mouth of most high proceedeth not evil and good. Wherefore doth a living man complain, a man of the for the punishment of his sins? How dare you complain because God punishes you for your sin? How dare I complain if God punishes me for my sin? Shut up! Shut up and repent and come in sackcloth and ashes making you stupid uh, excuses. God help us. God help our wicked souls. Let us search and try our ways and turn again to the Lord. Let us lift up our heart with our hands unto God in the heavens. We have transgressed and have rebelled. Thou hast not pardoned. You don't repent, you know what? God don't forgive. We don't repent. Go ahead, live in your sin. Carry on. Go on with your drunkenness. Go on with your sex perversion. Go on with your laziness. Go on with all your wickedness. Huh? Yeah. Rebel. You rebel, he don't pardon. He's always going to pardon me. No, no, not if you live in your sin. Thou hast covered with anger and persecuted us, God. Thou hast slain, thou hast not pitied. Send people to hell. Thou hast covered thyself with a cloud and our prayer should not pass through. Yeah. 
You ain't getting to God living in sin. Yeah, I said you ain't getting to God when you live in sin. I said you ain't getting to God when you live in sin. I don't like your preaching. God don't like the way you live either, huh? Yeah. Facebook. YouTube. I don't like your preaching, Varga. God don't like you living, sinner. All our enemies has opened their mouth against us. I got more enemies than Carter got liver pills. Fear and snare has come upon us. Desolation and destruction because of sin. Mine eye runneth down with rivers of water for the destruction of the daughter of my people. Oh, broken hearted Jeremiah. Mine eye trickleth down tears and ceases not without any intermission, pouring tears till the Lord look down and behold from heaven. Mine eye affecteth mine heart. Dr. Hiles, my good friend who went to heaven, he preached a great sermon on this. My eye affected my heart. Your eye is for wickedness, your heart's for wickedness. Your eye is for God, your heart is for God. Mine eye afflicted mine heart because of all the daughters of my city. Mine enemies chased me sore like a bird without cause. They have cut off my life in the dungeon and cast a stone upon me. Water flowed over mine head, then said, I am cut off. I called upon thy name, O Lord, out of the low dungeon. Thou hast heard my voice. Hide not thine ear at my breathing, at my cry. Thou drawest near in the day that I called upon thee. Thou saidest, Fear not. O oh Lord, thou hast pleaded the cause of my soul and hast redeemed my life. O oh Lord, thou hast seen my wrong. Judge thou my cause. Thou hast seen all their vengeance and all the imaginations against me. Thou hast heard their reproach, O oh Lord, and all their imaginations against me. The lips of those that rose up against me and their device against me all the day. Behold, you're sitting down and you're rising up. I am their music. Render unto them a re recompense, O Lord, according to the work of their hands. Give them sorrow of heart. They curse unto them. Persecute and destroy them in the anger from under the heavens of the Lord. My heaven. It's done. We can go on. The reading for today goes on to four and five. You need to get in the Bible, read it every day. Don't be just looking around to get that verse. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All that I needeth, thy hand hath provided. But remember this. Sometimes we need to get kicked in the teeth. Sometimes we need to get hit with a two before. Sometimes we need to have the heavy hand of God upon us because of what? Our what? Sin. And then when we repent, great is thy faithfulness. Sing it. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto thee. You repent, you get the mercy. You don't, what do you get? You got to work you over. If you never repent and got saved, you go to hell. If you're a backslider, you'll be miserable. Like many of you are right now in this church. You're miserable because you're a backslider and out there viewing the land. Great chapter, great preacher, weeping prophet, Jeremiah. Wrote Lamentations. When you listen to it, you pay attention. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord. 
Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Thank you, Lord, for giving to me thy great salvation so rich and free. Lord, I'm so glad I was saved. April 4th, 1969. Glory, my wife and I. 19310, Glenwood Road, New Grove, Wisconsin. Some in this church building today need to be saved. Some out there in the viewing land. You know you're lost, you've never repented. I repented April 4th, 1969. My wife and I, 19310, glory to God. He poured his mercy and forgiveness upon me. How about you? Why not now? Why not now? Why not trust in Jesus now? Why not now? Why not now? Why not trust in Jesus now? Lost sinner, God is talking to you. It's the Holy Ghost. Pray this sinner's prayer with me and get saved. Dear Lord Jesus, what Gabriel Varga here, your preacher, has been preaching, I believe. And I see the wickedness of my heart, and I repent of it and turn to you, and see that only your shed blood on Calvary could forgive my sin. I turn from my sin today, and I repent call upon you and receive you as my Savior right now. I ask this in the precious name of Jesus and because of his shed blood and the power of his resurrection on the third day. Amen. Amen.